Oh my god, we're playing some Civ 6. I'm so excited for this. I'm really excited for the fact that while I have covered it twice before, it's sort of a press pre preview thing at these events hosted by 2K and Firaxis, um, I wasn't able to do live recording at the time. Also, those were time limited demos. The first time, 60 turns. The next time was, I think, 100 turns. No more of that. We can play the complete game from start to finish with the caveat that we are still a month away from release. Many things may change. In addition, this particular press preview build ha is... Um, only has 10 civilizations, only has one difficulty enabled, that is to say Prince difficulty, but we will be able to play from start to finish. We can expect a lot of things that we're going to see here may change before release, so don't get married on any particular number or anything like that, but uh, I think we're going to have a pretty good time. So we had a pre we had a straw poll uh, before the stream started, and Norway took it decisively, uh, generating uh, a third more votes than the second place uh, civilization, which is Germany, followed closely behind by Japan. We want to see some Viking action here. We want to see some pillaging. We want to see their, whatever their special church is called. I don't remember the name of it. It's their unique building. We're going to play as Norway. I don't think Norway is necessarily the strongest of the civilizations, just based on, I mean, we haven't played it, we don't know exactly, but just sort of based on how all the, 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 the announced abilities come in. But I think that's going to be fine for us because I think we're still going to have a really, really good time. And since we're going to be playing Norway, we should probably test out the island map. Now, I will point out that over up on the Yub tubs right now, there is a video that has gone live for my Rome Let's Play. I did a Let's Play as Rome. That was my first proper game of Civ Six. In As such, we're going through, we're learning a lot of things, reading a lot of tool tips, trying to figure out how some of the mechanics work. We have figured those out at this point, so we're going to be applying things over here. So if you want to see Rome, it'll be on the UbTubs. If you can't watch all of the stream, don't worry, I'll get this up on YouTube as well. Very excited to be doing this. Let me go ahead and unmute the game music, because I did go and have that on mute over there. There we go. Hopefully we're good. Get the Viking hat. Oh man, that's a good point. Where's the ass? Got it. Whoopow! In before Viking hats didn't have horns. There we are. I gotta squoosh down for it to be visible. Can I bring the camera up? Not without losing the green screen. That's too bad. All right. <sighs> I don't think I don't think we have to do anything else. I think we just want to start the game, right? Mm. Single player. The only thing available in this particular press build. Create game. We're gonna choose Mr. Harold. Where are you, Harold? There you are over here, Harold. Hardrada from Norway, um, whose unique ability is that units gain the ability to enter ocean tiles after researching shipbuilding technology. So Vikings can enter the ocean sooner than everyone else. Very important second ability, naval melee units, so ships, the melee ships as opposed to the bombard ones, can heal in neutral territory. That includes our long ships, which are the replacement for the base galley. Oh, fantastic. Um, we get coastal raiding, we get berserkers, and the stave church it replaces the, um, I think replaces the base temple. And uh, our holy site districts get additional adjacency bonus from woods, which means we can actually generate a surprising amount of faith. We may, we may want to consider pursuing a religious victory, especially if we're playing on an islands map, because it actually might be easy to get all of our missionaries into, um, into uh, like all the cities because coastal should be relatively easy to go. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Oh, and then the Scandinavians in chat are starting to fight. Sweden are the true Vikings. And someone else is saying Norway and not Denmark. Denmark greater than Norway. Oh, you can always count. It's like that sibling rivalry. You can always count on the Scandies uh, to start to uh, yell at each other. We're in plan standard map size, just in the interest of trying to um, complete this Let's Play in a reasonable amount of time, sort of in a streaming format. Uh, it might not all be done in one day, but uh, I'm going to stream for as long as I've got the energy to do today, and then maybe we'll stream some more tomorrow. And of course, we have a regular streaming time on Saturday as well. Okay, let's get started. From it is a mistake. Oh. Of life beneath water. To the great beasts of the Stone Age. Sean B. To man taking his first upright steps. So you good. have come far. Now begins your greatest quest. From this early cradle of civilization on towards the stars. All men fear the approach of your ships, King Harold of Norway, Thunderbolt of the North. Your longboats dominate the waves, always at the ready to unleash their berserker armies on an unsuspecting shore. May Odin bless your kingdom 
and may the Skulls sing tales of the victories of your mighty warriors. Well, well, well. I gotta say, I don't think anything can ever truly replace having freaking Spock read out your tech quotes and everything in Civ. But this guy, ah, that voice, so good. Ah, begin game. Please be a good start. Please be a good start. Please be a good start. Yeah, though, no fish, no crabs. Really? Oh. But we do have stone, and that's very interesting. Let's go and uh, let's do a little save here so that we can start from our start over here at some point. Everything is groovy. It's going to be weird when the narrator dies halfway through the game. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely true. Hey, Lubez, thank you very much for the resub. Also, I know that we're not really looking at the resubs here. Bite Storm and Doro and many others before that, but the stream, the chat's going too fast. Thank you very much for all the subs and resubs. I'll try to get them as we go from now on over here. But whoop, 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 whoop. All right. So here is going to be our start. I did put islands map. We don't know how big our initial island will be. Most likely, I suspect, just sort of visually so far, I'm betting we could at least put another city on here. If not, maybe a couple of cities. Cross our fingers. We'll see how it goes. Uh, yeah, it's kind of odd. We didn't get any sea resources, which is too bad because that might make it a little bit harder for us to get our Eureka moments for sailing. Well, not sailing. Sailing's fine. If we find a, found a city on the coast, we'll get a Eureka towards sailing, which should happen now because we're literally about to found a city on the coast. Eureka moments give you half of a tech for free. It's amazing. Half of our tech, half of sailing will be research for us for free just because we found a city on the coast. Uh, size 9, thank you very much for the sub. And Lazours, whoop, whoop, 28 months, thank you very much. So there's that. The other, and obviously, naval stuff will be very, really relevant for us because we're playing as Vikings. Um, the other important one will be Celestial Navigation over here, which unlocks Harbor Districts, which I think will be quite handy for us. But even more importantly, probably, will be shipbuilding. Shipbuilding, you research that, and that enables our land units to embark at that point. Um, and to get the boost for this, we just have to build two galleys. And again, our long ships replace the galleys. We can take a look at their stats over here if we want. Long ship, Viking long ship, boom. And I'm right, yeah, replaces the galley. So this is a melee unit. The normal galley has a strength of 25. The Viking longship, the Viking longship has a strength of 30. A big boost. And as a melee naval vessel, which this is, this can heal in neutral territory, which means we can go a pillaging, which is going to be fun. We also have the ability, our ships on the coast can pillage stuff that's on land. Boom! It feels very, very appropriate. Hey, Infinite Tag, thank you very much. Or Infinite G, thank you very much for that. I don't see any reason not to settle in place. We're adjacent to a river, we're on the coast, all that thing. There is, it's interesting, you don't need to be on the coast to build ships anymore. Because as long as the sort of coast is sort of within range of your city, you can build a harbor district on the coast, and then you can build ships out of that harbor district. So you don't actually need to be on the coast to build ships, but I don't see any reason why we wouldn't do it here. Plus we can build ships this way without a harbor district. Um, the only thing might be if we wanted to, wonders, just like districts, sit in a tile now. So if we decided that we really needed this tile to be an empty spot for a district or a wonder, we might consider moving. But let's go ahead and just, just, just settle in place. Anyway, we got our Eureka towards sailing. Woo! All right, Nidaros, Nidaros. This place, this place has been founded. Um, and we've got our warrior. Now, I don't think there's going to be a lot to explore, but I will tell you this. Barbarians will mess up your stuff in Civ 6. I remember at the, uh, the, um, the New York press event, you know, you've got a lot of people there who have played a lot of Civ 5, and almost all of them got their crap, just, they got their butts kicked by barbarians with the new mechanics because it's quite surprising. But I'm going to go ahead and peek to the north over here. <gasps> Canal City? Actually, well, no, probably unnecessary Canal City. We do have some fishies over here. These are fish and not whales. I, in my, uh, in my Rome game, you'll see me call this whales a lot because for some reason, from far away, it sort of maybe looks like a big blue whale or something, but that is indeed the fish. Okay, we have to choose our first production. Now, this is interesting because we don't know. I should move my face a little bit over there. Let's do that. Um, we don't know what the optimal build order will be in Civ 6. People haven't sort of crunched all the numbers yet or anything like that. In Civ 5, you know, in, in the later stages of Civ 5, especially at higher difficulties, most people um, with the latest patches and balance, a lot of people are like, probably something like Scout Scout Monument or Scout Scout Shrine. It tends to be the stronger start. Although things are a little bit different on an island because you don't really need double scout. There's huge value to doing early scouting in Civ 6. 
A, you still have the Goody Huts, which are good, but B, meeting city-states first is incredibly powerful. That being said, I think I might start with a slinger or just go straight to a monument. So we don't we don't know what, what it'll be. I mean, the monument's always good for the culture, which gives us the culture so we can get more civics, which is a very important part of the game. Um, also pushes out our borders. We could start with the builder right away, but I'm not convinced that that's going to be that useful. Also, we don't really have all that much technology to improve this stuff yet, so that might be a bit of a rush. We need irrigation to work the citrus. We need mining to work the stone. We need animal husbandry for the sheep. Uh, we can start with the, um, the rice right away, but that would only be one thing for our builder to do. So... A lot of people want a scout. All right, you know what? Well, we can put out a scout first. That's fine. Well, you know what? I think I'm going to go slinger, actually, because I don't think we're going to need the scout, the scout at this area. We will build a scout later, probably when we have the uh, ability to embark. But the slinger will be very valuable. There's actually, there is a boost. If you kill a unit with a slinger, you get half your research towards archery. That's your boost for archery. So it's actually kind of handy to do that. And I've grown kind of paranoid of barbarians. So I think with the warrior slinger, I'm going to have all that I need to explore my starting island and all that I need to defend myself. And then we'll probably go into a monument after that. I think that's going to feel okay. Slinger is a range one ranged unit. It only has a range of one. We do get to start with it right away. So then the question is, what do we research first? It is an excellent, excellent question. We got the boost for sailing, so it's half researched already. So there might be some incentive to that. That being said, we don't need the fishing boats right away because there's literally no point to doing it in our capital. Although, the sooner we unlock the longships, the sooner we start exploring, and once we build two longships, we get the boost of the other tech. Um, it's worth noting the first three technologies here, pottery, animal husbandry, and mining, none of them have a boost. So, you can sort of just research them whenever, and you'll get, um, you know, you, you, you don't have to worry about having wasted a boost later on. If we go pottery, while the granary is not as important as it used to be uh, early in the game, because it's only plus one food, we'll talk about housing later, but we don't need housing early in the game, um, especially in our capital where it's position. It does lead to writing, which is really strong. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I, I kind of feel like, I kind of feel like starting on pottery. Go Viking, go sailing. I mean, that is true, but I do like to get the campus set up early. Is there anything that prevents city spam, spam, spam? Well, not the same way because there's not the happiness penalty from having more cities, but I think that city spam isn't going to be too abusive. Every time you build a settler, your city population goes down by one, so that's a little bit of a change. Can't farm rice without pottery. Oh, you're right. It's interesting that it wasn't highlighting that. That is interesting. Well, the other thing we could do is actually work our way up to... I would like to get the mining for this. If we did get... So, all right, here's the thing. If we get pottery, at some point we can build a worker, improve this. As soon as you build one farm, it gives you Eureka towards irrigation, which is going to be important there. We can also pick up mining and build this. I think I'm going to go and grab pottery for now. Um, but you know what? We can delay pottery. I'm going to go for the sailing. And then pottery. And then we'll see how it goes. I don't think it really matters because the, the first couple of techs, we're not going to be doing anything to take advantage of the first couple of techs, kind of regardless. Um, for the sake of completion, I'm going to go north over here. This is a marsh tile over here, which gives us plus one food, which is very nice early on. It's as good as a farm early on. Uh, to improve it, you do need to clear the marsh, but then you can then build farms and stuff later on when they get better. More stone over here. You know what's interesting? Yes, I know you can harvest a resource for a big one-time boost. You don't need to all caps that. Maybe you're telling it for other people. What is interesting with the stone is, oh, this will be more on the Code of Laws side. Do we want to play the religious game? If so, um, sorry, where, the Oracle is on the civic side. Where is, Stonehenge is in astrology. Find a natural wonder. Wouldn't it be great for us to build Stonehenge? Found an early religion? To build Stonehenge, it has to be adjacent to stone, which we have, which isn't that common. What if we went mining into astrology? Build a builder after this. Maybe skip the monument. Skip the monument. Build a builder after this. Um, oh, we still won't be able to improve the freaking rice. But improve the stone, get some better construction. You know what I'm saying? You guys want to see wonders, right? You like wonders? I usually don't build wonders, but I think we're going to be able to sneak that in perfectly fine here. We might want to, like, expand once first. I'm still going to hold off on sailing. We can get irrigation quite early with the farming. I actually think that might be what we do. 
is go something like Pottery Mining Irrigation. That'll unlock three um, initial improvements that we can build. Uh, so our first builder will be in a good shape, and then try to sneak in Astrology. All right, let's just get Pottery up going. We don't need the Sailing quite yet. We'll just pick something. It's all good. Uh, do you get the full benefit of Eureka's if you start researching something? Yes, you do. So... Uh, what can happen is if you've self-researched about halfway through something and then get your Eureka, it will finish right away. So, it's quite good. I do... Um, I have fast movement turned on. Um, I had fast combat turned on. I'll turn both off for a little while, but I will probably turn them both on later on. Um, because I like to go faster. But for now, yeah, I'll slow down the movement. So, let's go over here and see. There you go, a little walking animation, good little map. So, really few sea resources over here, which is really odd. Hmm. Mm hmm Yeah, one thing in the tech list is a lot of these techs do something that isn't listed in the icons here. There's not an icon. In Civ 5, for example, here with Irrigation, Irrigation allows you to clear marshes. It doesn't have an icon for that in the list, but if you mouse over the technology itself, it says allow clearing of marsh. Same thing with pottery. It says allow harvesting of wheat and rice. Oh, maybe for this is harvesting. It's not farming it. It's harvesting it for the instant boost as opposed to farming it. So maybe we don't need the um, the pottery for that. But I'm, I'm not going to change my mind again. It's going to be fine. Um, all right. Well, with that done, I guess... You know what? I want to I wanna do the northern coast over here. And actually, you know what? Go to the stone because I want to push out our borders over there. Almost certainly we'll want to put something in the north. Ah! Oh! Already with the Barbarians. So, the way Barbarians work in Civ 6 is that the Barbarian campments spawn a scout, which goes looking for your city. If the scout finds your city and then returns to its encampment, the encampment will then start spamming you with units to attack you. It is imperative that you destroy scouts as quickly as possible. The problem is, scouts have a freaking movement speed of 3. They no longer ignore difficult terrain, but they have a movement speed of 3. Uh, yeah, that's it. Barbarians are approaching our city. God damn it. Well, I'm really happy I started with the Slinger. You see? Slinger! God! Okay, now here's another interesting change. I cannot attack this scout this turn. Because even though I have one movement left, it costs two to enter a hill. In Civ 5, I would be able to enter a hill with one movement left. But in Civ 6, you can't. You need, if something costs two to enter, you need two to enter it. Which also means I can't attack this scout. Not only that, but the zones of control mechanic is a little bit different. I cannot move over here. If you enter into a zone of control, like adjacent to an enemy, you can't move again. You could attack. If this guy was on flat land, I could attack him. But I still wouldn't be able to move, you know, anywhere else. So, this guy is going to be a pain in the ass to catch. Nidoros is growing. I haven't uh, micromanaged my tiles, and maybe I could have or should have. Uh, the other thing to consider is, would I have wanted to buy any tiles to accelerate things? Yeah, I might have wanted to uh, actually more quickly buy the citrus. That is a ridiculous amount of food over there. So Nidoros isn't producing things too quickly because we're not getting any production from over here, but we are getting a really good amount of food. Thank you very much, Mr. Scout, for not just running away that way. But he's, he's trying to scout. He's trying to do his job. Um, and I... Oh. Did he survive with one hit point? That's Civ. That's just Civ. Yeah, he's just trying to scout. The barbarians are, you know, they have they have a very single-minded focus. They have one job. Oh, again, I won't be able to attack him here because it costs two to enter a marsh, but he should be pinned in. He just discovered that that's a dead end. Slinger done in one turn. That's good, though, because we're going to have the Slinger and we're going to use him to help no clear out that encampment. Clay and then left it, as if there would be bricks by chance and fortune. Quill is slaughtering people for doing their job. Well, they're not my people. They're, they're strangers and foreigners. We can't allow this. Don't worry. The dog will survive. Normally, the dog actually runs away, but I think he couldn't because of the sea. But they don't kill the dog, which is great. So again, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to research mining here, because there's no boost to be had for it regardless. And I still don't think we need to rush sailing. All right, I do, I think I'm going to build an early builder. This is quite early, I think, for me, for the way I've played a lot of the uh, Civ here. But we are going to be able to improve the rice and the stone. And as soon as we improve the rice, we will get 
our Eureka for irrigation, which means our citrus will be able to be improved as well, which will be a very, very, very good strong start. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and build the builder. So a builder, unlike in Civ Five, A, builds things instantly, but B, um, um, has a limited number of charges. Oh, apparently got a couple of tips here, and I did not hear the sound. Which is kind of odd to me. We got one from Burning Void. Thank you very much for the tip. Who said, uh, quick question, Quill. When are you going to build the Petra? Actually, if we find a desert place, I'm going to have to build the Petra just because. Uh, Viperhawk. Thank you very much as well. Greetings from Sault Ste. Marie. Well, greetings back to you. How's the Sioux? Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to move in this direction. I got to be a little careful for the Slinger because it only has a melee strength of five. So it's quite weak in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but otherwise we're doing okay. So we've got some more fish. We've got the fish over there. Where are we going to place our second city? You want to avo avoid too much overlap. And really, like, the sheep and the stone over here is really Nidoros. So are we going to take advantage of stuff over here or not? Maybe we'll just be settling somewhere over there. Hmm. I'm going to move the slinger into the forest. Okay, still a barbarian camping. We've got some cattle over here. So it's, it's a milk icon for cattle, which I guess is fine. Um, this guy needs to heal. I'm going to move him into friendly territory to heal because, um, in, just like in Civ 5, in enemy territory or neutral territory, we heal 10 hit points per turn. In friendly territory, it's 15. I think in cities, you heal 20. Anyway, you go there and I don't want to move too far forward with the slinger because I don't want to get him murdered, but I guess we can scooch up here, get a little bit of vision. That might still be okay. We'll have a river. Yeah, I think this is going to be safe. All right. There's the barbarian encampment. Guarded by spearmen over here, which seems to be standard. And annoyingly, I'm not going to be able to use my slinger to fight. Slinger has a range of one. Yeah, if we'd moved Nidoros over here, it would have been better. <laughs> but we had no way of really knowing that. Uh, so yeah, I won't be able to use my slinger um, and melee. Season, our government can be of great benefit. Our people await your decree. All right, uh, we got a tip in from the 11th Plague, and now the sound is working. Greetings from Kitchener. Wow, we've got a lot of people from Ontario here. Hello. Um, yeah, so what is it telling us here? Wisdom, but authority that makes a law. Oh, Sean. So we completed our first civic. So for you, those of you who don't know, there's basically two tech trees now. There's the tech tech tree, but then there's also the civic tech tree. Well, the civic tree. Um, and you progress through this tree using culture as opposed to science. And lots of things unlock here. They're including buildings. Um, for example, you unlock the entertainment complex and the arena building through games and recreation here in the civic tree. But you also get wonder. Um, are the game sounds too low? I can go and crank it up a little bit here. You guys will have to let me know how the sound balance works. Um, there's also wonders. For example, the Oracle over here is quite good. Uh, the actual Colosseum and so on and so forth. We've got a great library over here, which is stupendously good. Gives you a boost to all ancient and classical era technologies. Crazy. Has to be built on flat land, adjacent to a campus district with a library. Some of these criteria are quite hard. Um, Big Ben, um, I don't remember where it is in, in the thing, but Big Ben has to be built adjacent to on flat land, adjacent to a river, next to a commercial district that has a bank. It's like really, 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 really specific. So anyway, so we've completed Code of Laws, and we get we have to choose another Civic um, at this point. Um, I will certainly be getting the boost with Craftsmanship over here to improve three tiles. We're working on that quite early. So I don't want to research this too early. Actually, ten turns to the Builder. No, I'm going to grab uh, Foreign Trade, because I don't think we're going to be discovering a second a continent in a, a very uh, minimal amount of time. So I'm just going to do this. That way I don't finish... Uh, craftsmanship too early uh, before we get its full boost. So we've got that. But more importantly, we've unlocked some policy cards. The very first civic we got gave us four policy cards over here, which we can slot into our government. Our current government is chiefdom. Everyone starts with chiefdom, which has a slot for one military policy and one economic policy. If you're playing as the Greeks, you get to start with a wild card policy slot as well, which can fit anything which is awesome. So we have to go and fit this in. Um, there's some really good options for all of this. Uh, survey gives you double experience for recon units. Scouts get experience points from fighting, but also every time they uncover new tiles, scouts get XP, so that would double that. But I'm going to take discipline here, which gives us plus five strength when fighting barbarians. Huge. I have to choose an economic policy here. I do like urban planning a lot. Plus one production in all cities is very, very, very sizable. But what I think I'm going to do 
is start with God King because we only have one city right now and I'd really like to found a Pantheon. So this will give us plus one faith and plus one gold in our capital. Once I get more than one city, then urban planning will become quite good. And we're going to unlock tons of these policies later on. Not only that, but later on we're going to unlock new government types which have more policy slots. The, the, this, I don't know if you'd call this the first tier or the second tier. They have four slots each, then six, then eight. Plus, there's wonders and different things like that that you can build that give you even more policy slots, which is great. This warrior here, we're going to just get him to rest for now. And the slinger, if I cross over here, there's actually a really good chance the spearmen will go out and melee attack me. Um, the barbarians that are guarding their encampments are actually a little bit more aggressive than they used to be. So I'm just going to scout around a little bit down here. But mostly, I think the slinger is going to park himself in the forest here and just guard against any other um, uh, or scout that might come out of here. Okay, this is definitely a great spot for a city. One, two, three. So this cattle is out of range of the capital. Um, if we were to settle, say, here or here, one, two, th okay, so not here, maybe here, right here, would get us both these fish, the milk, another fish over there, the crab, the citrus, be on a river. I, I think that's a no-brainer spot right there, right? There will be some overlap with the capital, but I don't think in a problematic uh, sense. Build a longship and raid the encampment? Oh, perhaps. We don't have the longship tech yet, but... That may have been the better way to go. I'm not sure. You know, you can pop the encampment with that. Do I want to go south or do I want to stay here? I mean, I guess if there's a scout, I still have the uh, the warrior ready to defend. So I may as well go ahead and... Um, I'm going to go down this way. Because we're going to go to the other side of the river later. So we've got silver. We've got diamonds. All right. And this guy's just healing up. Sit on the citrus, not the forest. Oh, because then they won't be able to cross the river. Maybe. You want to see the continent overlay? Sure. Now, right now, this is all just one continent. This is the continent of Vendian. And I'm expecting on an island map that we won't see another continent until we get to another actual island. Uh, that's not quite the case on um, the other maps, like Pangea and stuff. Oh, there's another barbarian encampment down here. I'm just going to wait right here. God, because he's going to spawn stuff. Oh, we're going to be doing nothing but fighting barbarians for an extended period of time here. Um, you know what? Come down here. It depends on where the scout decides to move. Okay, he's moving away. That's good. deserves more credit than the wife of a coal miner? So we've unlocked mining. I'm going to take my warrior here who's almost completely healed. He's at 87 of 100. Well, I guess, you know, that's 13 off. That's basically exactly lined up for another turn. Okay, I'll get you to wait. So we've unlocked mining. So now we're seven turns away from producing a builder. Once he farms that, we will get the boost towards irrigation. But irrigation is only 10 turns, so it really wouldn't... Like, we wouldn't get the full value of the boost here. So... It's either going to be riding or sailing. Sailing if we want to get their longships up and running at ASAP. Riding if we want to start to get the tech going a little bit sooner. You know what? We'll grab sailing, because who knows? We might be in another civilization and get a discount there. Plus, it's only going to take four turns. And it does open up the possibility. We can sneak out one longboat and start doing some coastal exploring, not to mention some raiding. All right, you're going to start moving back up here, just to provide a little bit of extra cover in case something spawns out over here. Probably we don't need both. Could go astrology. That's true. We are unlikely to find a natural wonder anytime soon. And I was talking about doing all that, didn't I? Okay, let's do it. We'll keep... I mean, I know I keep putting a little bit of turns in the sailing, but we don't have to rush finishing it. You're right. It would be nice to finish the Stonehenge. I'm not... I'm not I don't usually build a lot of wonders, so it's not, you know, top of brain for me. All right, you get over here. We're going to try to clear that out. And I don't think you'll actually need, like, the cover... I'm going to wait around a little bit longer. Let me swing back over here, just to glance, make sure there's no uh, scout coming that way, and move over. 